Kate Chopin was one of the women that wrote at the turn of the 19th into the 20th centuries. And like many of these women, Chopin dealt with the challenges women of the time faced living in a male-dominated culture that limited all aspects of their lives and sense of themselves. By the age of 35, she found herself widowed and raising six children virtually by herself. So she began writing. She began writing to support her family. In her life, she wrote three novels, 150 short stories, poetry, and many reviews and pieces of criticism. One of the themes that is present in most all of Chopin's writings is the question of what options do women have in their lives and in the culture of the time period. In other words, what does it mean to be a woman during the time that Chopin was writing? The story that I asked you guys to read is called The Story of an Hour. And I hope that you found it interesting. It's short, it's an easy read. Most students do like it. And I just want to point out a few aspects of this story that I think speak to the heart of what Chopin is trying to bring out and bring to the surface in, in the short story. It was published in 1894, so before women got the vote and, you know, I've sort of situated this text in, in a historical context for you uh, through the other, through the video before. So where we find ourselves in this story is Mrs. Mallard, the main character, being told that her husband was killed. And so the story opens with this news. And what happens with Mrs. Mallard is that she is visibly upset. We know that she weeps with just this sudden and wild abandonment. She has this moment of intense grief, and then she goes to her room. She retires to her room, very visibly upset. Then what happens and what we get are a couple of paragraphs that I think are quite interesting. And these passages are taken from those, that, those first couple of paragraphs in the, the, early in the story. We find that she sees new spring life, that she smells a delicious breath of rain, that she hears notes of a distant song of countless sparrows twittering. And in the, in the next paragraph, we find out that there are patches of a blue sky. So what she sees here when she goes to her room is not a setting of death and dying or decay, but what she sees outside is, is a setting that shows there's life everywhere. And so this is very much a contrast in a kind of setting you would associate with death and dying. And so it begs the question, you know, why does she see life everywhere? Why is she moved from grief to this, you know, experience of life or possibility? She, at the, later on, she says there was something coming to her and, you know, she was waiting for it. So, so what is that? And what we find is that over the next few paragraphs, she repeats the word free. She says, free, free, free. She would live for herself. And then she says again, free, body and soul free. So she's got this sense of hope, um, the sense that um, she wasn't free before. Now that her husband is dead, she has the ability, or at least the hope, 
that she can live for herself, that she can do things for herself, that she can break out of these culturally defined roles. And then at the end of the story, we get very interesting twist. She walks downstairs. She realizes that her husband has not been killed, but he walks through the door. And the last line of the story, it says, when the doctors came, they said she had died of heart disease of joy that kills. Well, she died of a heart attack when she saw him because she was so startled. But we know because of the life she sees everywhere, the freedom she feels like she has found after her husband's death, that she doesn't die of a joy that kills. What she does is she dies of despair because the hope that she thought she had would be, um, you know, was now erased because her husband was actually alive. So what we get with Chopin here is a real indictment of her culture at the time as far as women were concerned and how few options women really had and how very difficult it was for them to gain their independence.